Hello and welcome to another Water Drops workflow video. In this video we're going to be looking at using uh, the automated composite curve number tool in InfoWorks ICM, one of the built-in tools to ICM. My name is Ryan Brown, I'm an implementation consultant with Autodesk, and here we go. So who's this for? Modelers interested in some of the more automated ways of using InfoWorks ICM. Also, as you can imagine, we're talking about the curve number, and with that, uh, those are, have to be using the SCS or the NRCS runoff methods. Uh, there's also a uh, capability within the same tool to calculate the impervious area if that's needed as well. How we're gonna go through this is to look at the soils and land use shape files uh, that we're gonna use in order to uh, work with the tool. Um, there's a little bit of legwork that you have to do, uh, depending on, I guess, the source of the data uh, that you might have to add in some additional information. We're also going to need to look up, uh, uh, develop a lookup table. Uh, this lookup table is going to be uh, cross-referencing the hydrologic soil group and the land use ID. Um, so we'll have to have that for uh, use in the tool as well. And then finally, looking at some of the uh, tool setup and the inputs that go into it, and then finally running it, uh, and some of the things to keep in mind while running this type of um, running this type of tool. So starting off in ArcGIS Pro, we can see some of the source data that I brought in. I have a soils layer here, as well as a land use layer. Uh, these are typically downloaded soil survey from web soil survey or from state repositories or land uses from state repositories as well. When you do download it from a web soil survey, it doesn't have a hydrologic soil group, so you will have to go ahead and go in and add those. Alternatively, you could use one of these others. We'll take a look at how we can look at the different ways we could set up the CSV lookup table. Same idea here with the future land use. This has some codes in it already, so you can see under the, the name column here, these are just the different types of land type codes that are in here. If we go ahead and take a look at the lookup table that I put together, you can see those land use codes over here on the left, and then the hydraulic soil group on the top here. Uh, this is just the Excel file, but you will need to save this down into a, a CSV. All these numbers are made up, so don't pay too much attention to them. It's just an example. If we flip now over to InfoWorks ICM, you can see I've got a simple network here, and I've already added in those GIS layers, so the soil layer, as well as the future land use there, simply by add and then incorporating that. I've also just built in a, a pretty simple subcatchment, again, just for a demonstration purpose. Of course, you could do this for much larger areas and many, many different subcatchments in here. But essentially what we're going to do is combine that soil data as well as the land use data and come up with a composite curve number. So here we can see the parameter that we're setting up. You can also use this for runoff coefficients. I am using the layers and just do it from a file, uh, but I know I've already kind of got that set up. These are going to be all the fields that we're looking at in the table in ArcGIS Pro. Land use is the name column, and then HSG is the column for the hydrologic soil group within that soil layer. Again, pointing to the CSV where that information is stored. So I've got that pointed in the right place. And then if you were to use maybe one of those other fields in the soil and you had more than four soil types, then you could obviously just change that number. Here we can also set a new flag which is also another key point where in the flag starting off, uh, if you do want to use this tool, this flag does need to be set to the number sign G flag or else it won't compute through there. Different options down here for if we run into any kinds of errors or anything like that. I'm just going, well, I'll do stop and report. I do know we don't get any kind of errors, but in the log, you can look look through the, the log as well as uh, look at the summary table of all the statistics that went into the calculation of the curve number, and then also produce the lookup table if you want to as well. So you hit OK. You can see now we've updated that curve number. That flag is now updated to the one we specified within that dialog. Here's the log. I'm just going through what it is. I do get a, a warning here. 
that there's some suspect areas and we can use the diagnostic polygons tool to be able to identify those but generally speaking the warnings aren't going to affect too too terribly much you can see the catchment i've got the area that composite curve number the minimum maximum curve number in the area and then as well as that lookup table so yeah like i said a pretty straightforward and easy way to calculate these curve numbers based on the soil and the land use just takes a couple of steps uh, once you do have all your subcatchments built out to populate that curve number relatively quickly and easily. So in conclusion here, uh, there is some setup involved with this tool, uh, but with uh, the proper setup, uh, it can be very quick and easy to calculate the curve number or the impervious area uh, with just a few clicks. Uh, this can be uh, extremely time saving, especially for uh, very large areas with many different subcatchments and many different land uses and sa uh, soil types listed uh, above them in order to aggregate that curve number or impervious area rather than having to uh, do it by hand or some other method. And then of course, always reach out if you need help.